So thank you everyone for being here. Thank you so much to our panelists for taking the time to be here. As you'll shortly find out, it is very late in Jerusalem where Hakop and Setrak are joining from. So thank you guys, especially for making the time and um, going out of your way to be here with us today and answer our questions. Um, on behalf of the All Armenian Student Association, it is my pleasure to welcome you all to our Q&A with the Save the Armenian um, team from Jerusalem and also their legal representatives. Um, All ASA is an umbrella organization representing Armenian student organizations and groups, almost 40 of them actually, across the United States and now worldwide with chapters in China and Europe as well. So all very exciting. Um, in light of everything that's been happening in Jerusalem and the existential threat that the Armenian quarter is now facing, we thought that it would be more critical than ever before to sort of lend our platform to this uh, amazing team of young people who are fighting to preserve our heritage and such an important part of Armenian identity and one of the oldest Armenian diasporas in the world. So um, it's a very important event and we're very lucky to have our panelists here today. And thank you all again for joining us. Uh, before we get to the um, to the matter at hand, I'll quickly introduce the format for today. So we will begin with some questions posed um, on behalf of all ASA, some moderated questions this, just to give us a chance to sort of contextualize the issue and give the panelists a chance to introduce themselves and um, the situation at hand. And then we will open up the floor to questions from the audience. The way you can ask a question is either by direct messaging it to me um, to me in the chat. So make sure that you select all ASA Mana Berikyan when you are um, sending a message via the chat, or you can also turn on your video and raise your hand. And we are asking that you first turn on your video before raising your hand and unmuting to ask a question just so that it's all more interactive. So um, we'd love to see your faces. If you are in a place where you can have your video on, please do that. Um, okay, without further ado, let me quickly introduce our panelists and then we can get right in, get straight into it. Um, so first up, I'll introduce Jacob uh, Zernazian, who is a fourth generation descendant of the post-genocide Jerusalem Armenian community. His passion and advocacy for the preservation of the Armenian quarter of Jerusalem has led him to take on the role as a co-founder of the Save the Ark movement. Through leadership and dedication, he has played a pivotal role in raising awareness about the importance of safeguarding the historic and culturally significant Armenian land. Hakob, Hakob also serves as the executive committee member and the leader of the scouts at the Hoyach Men Club in Jerusalem, a cornerstone institution in the Jerusalem Armenian community. His involvement ensures the continuity of cultural traditions and values for future generations. Hakob is currently pursuing a bachelor's degree in international relations and Middle Eastern studies at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. So that's Hakob. Um, next up, I'll introduce Setrak Balian who is an activist, writer, and a fourth-generation descendant of the esteemed Balian family. He has studied economics in France and Armenia and explored the world of ceramics in Spain. Setrak's roots run deep in the cultural heritage of his ancestors, as the Balians are one of the founding families of Armenian ceramics in Jerusalem. Setrak is a co-founder of the Save the Ark movement and has emerged as a prominent voice in advocating for the preservation of the architectural a historical and cultural treasures of his cherished Armenian quarter. Beyond his activism, Setrak has also contributed to scholarly discourse on Jerusalem Armenians through several articles. And last but certainly not least, I'll introduce Mr. Kerkonyan, who is a seasoned international lawyer. He currently leads the international and federal practice groups at Kerkonyan Dajani LLP, focusing on complex litigation matters, Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act litigation, commercial sanctions regimes, and commercial transactions, both international and domestic. He holds an AB magna cum laude in government from Harvard University and two law degrees, a JD from the University of Chicago, where he served on the law review, as well as a postdoctoral diploma in public international law from Cambridge University in England, where he studied under James R. Crawford, later a judge of the International Court of Justice. Upon completing his studies, Mr. Kerkonyan joined Mayor Brown LLP in Chicago, working on federal litigation and appeals, in, and in 2003, he began his own practice. As a founding partner of Kerkonyan Dajani LLP, Mr. Kerkonyan regularly handles litigation and appeals covering a range of subjects, including foreign sovereign immunity, international business contracts, fiduciary duties, statutory and tort claims, often involving multinational commercial entities and foreign 
States. His transactional practice focuses on corporate transactions, including international acquisitions, joint ventures, and stock asset sales. Mr. Kerkonian is likewise active in public interest matters involving international human rights issues, presenting regularly on matters of public international law, the International Court of Justice, the European Court of Human Rights, and the application of international law in U.S. courts. He's an adjunct He's an adjunct professor of public international law at Artsakh State University, and he also leads the international legal team of the Save the Ark movement. So again, thank you so much to all of our amazing panelists um, for being here with us today. Um, without further ado, let's get right into the questions. I think the most interesting one for a lot of us will be to ask Zetrak and Hakob where you guys are right now, and also tell us the time where you are. First of all, thank you for having us and thank you for this wonderful introduction. Um, and thank you to the All ASA uh, Association as well. So right now we're in the seminary hall, which is where we commemorate the Armenian genocide events, which unfortunately is also a part of the 98 year lease that was given to the private development company. And uh, we're somewhere where it's also under threat and it's Right now, uh, 10 past midnight, uh, after a long day, we had, I think, three, four meetings and also two birthdays of uh, members of Save the Ark uh, team uh, who were born today. So uh, happy birthday to them, Hagop and Keram. Hagop, Hagop, Yan, Keram, Balian. And that's where we are. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, well, thank you guys for being here at such a late hour. Um, and before we begin, for those who may not be as familiar with the issues, can you briefly summarize why and how the movement to save the Armenian quarter of Jerusalem began and where it stands now? Um, what have been some of the successes and low points that you've experienced along the way? So we uh, established the Save the Ark movement a few months ago. It started with a very spontaneous uh, protest, demonstration outside of the house the defrocked priest who signed uh, the deal and uh, the same day he decided to run away and uh, leave Jerusalem so we decided that uh, we, we are organizing a demonstration and then the spontaneous dem demonstration turned an official one Two days after uh, the first one. So since then, since May 2023, we uh, had the demonstrations, the media coverage, uh, working with the lawyers, with the uh, Kerkoni and Dajani law firm, uh, meeting the diplomats and the churches. Uh, and eight months ago, we decided that in order to work of, uh, on the media, the league uh, on the legal front, uh, on the ground, and with the demonstrations, we should create or establish a movement. And we called it Save the Ark, which is Save the Armenian Quarter. And uh, our goal is to preserve and protect the Armenian quarter, especially during these days where our presence, uh, our long and uninterrupted presence in Jerusalem is in uh, great danger. We as a movement achieved uh, a lot in the past eight months starting from having our uh, own uh, legal team, international legal team and local uh, legal team, uh, filing uh, different, uh, uh, doing legal, legal uh, uh, proceedings and uh, having large uh, media coverage, uh, local and internationally, uh, meetings with the heads of churches, uh, different communities, Israeli Palestinian civil societies, with different diplomatic uh, missions in uh, Jerusalem and bringing the issue uh, to the uh, agenda of different uh, governments, uh, the US, France, Russia, and many other uh, countries who are now interested in this uh, issue. So for uh, kind of eight months, I think we achieved uh, a lot, but uh, we are on the right to having uh, more success in our uh, long struggle but a just struggle. Sorry. Can, no you, can you see us normally? Because we got a message that we're frozen. Everything okay? Your yeah. screen is frozen, but we could hear your yeah. audio. Your audio is good. Okay. And Sedrak, John, anything to add? Yeah, so 
Uh, you ask how it started. Actually, the catalyst to all of this was uh, the news that not only the parking lot is uh, included in the deal, but also other parts, which include five residential homes, which include the private parking of the Patriarchate, the private garden, and the seminary hall we're uh, right now sitting in. Uh, so that's what made a big uh, commotion in the community. But uh, to be clear, we were uh, opposed to this deal even without those areas included. But that's kind of what gave the community uh, the chance to mobilize and because they realized the threat is very real and very close. And uh, that's how it, it, it all started. Because, you know, to understand exactly what's going on in Jerusalem, you need to understand the system and the structure over here. Uh, the Armenian Patriarchate is run by the Armenian Patriarch, who's the absolute uh, ruler if you will, and then you have the Synod, which is eight priests, and then you have the broader General Assembly of the St. James Brotherhood, which consists of between 30 to 31 priests, depending on the period. And all the decision uh, making is made by uh, the institution, by the patriarchate, and the community has uh, no say whatsoever in that process. But in this deal, uh, even a lot of members of the Brotherhood were not aware of this deal. The Synod was not aware of this deal. So uh, it was very tough to get the community to go against something which they don't have the details. You know, They don't know what it's about exactly. We heard that, yes, the land is given, it's leased. How long? What are the conditions? What amount? What financial compensation? All the details were not known to us. And also the Armenian community of Jerusalem is very dependent on the Patriarchate. Our homes, most of our homes belong to the Patriarchate. Uh, a lot of us work, uh, a lot of the community members work inside the Patriarchate, be it in the school, as teachers or in the administration. So uh, as an established authority and institution that has existed for 1500 years, to get people to go not against the institution, but against the decisions the wrong decisions of the institution can be very tricky. And also to add that, uh, unfortunately, during uh, Khachik Barret Yeretsian's tenure as director of real estate, there was some uh, environment of fear uh, inside the community because there were a lot of contracts that were changed, a lot of the conditions of getting a house and so on. So there was a lot of fear in the community as well. But what that... Uh, what that information did, the, the fact that there are homes, and it was truly shocking, you know, in the Patriarchate's garden is literally below the Patriarch's window. It's, it's stuck to, to the Armenian Patriarch, to the seat of the Armenian Patriarch of Jerusalem. So uh, anyone who hears news like this and anyone who finds out about something like this will be shocked and traumatized and will understand the gravity of the situation and that is exactly what happened and then the events that Hagop talked about ensued and we went to protest for long months <laughs> difficult months it was a weekly uh, on a weekly basis uh, with some interruptions but all in all I think we reached uh, good results we got the patriarchate to finally go back on the deal uh, to send the cancellation letter and uh, the ups and downs I mean every day we used to have ups and downs during the same hour you know you get good news and then you get bad news and then you get worse news so it's it's a real roller coaster and uh, thank god we have our team of international lawyers and local lawyers who guide us uh, in every decision who reassure us who motivate us who encourage us and of course the community uh, and uh, the broader Armenian community, the Armenian nation that has been very worried about this situation, very uh, encouraging. And let me just pose this as a quick follow-up, but a lot of times in the Armenian community, we like to talk about um, these huge problems that are facing our people, but then you often find that there are low levels of engagement when it's time to sort of take action. Is that something that you've experienced or would you say that a good majority of the Armenian community in Jerusalem is sort of rallying around this issue and full, throwing their full support behind it as you have. Look, during the protests, it was uh, a bit uh, challenging. You know, we used to have uh, some days 200 people, others 50 people. You know, it's very tiring. It's also a war of attrition. 
people say you know they rely on the fact that okay they'll get tired they will stop the protest this will lead nowhere but uh, with i mean determination obviously you can't get anyone on board uh, uh from the beginning but the real i mean uh, big unity came after the patriarchate also decided to cancel the deal and there was a, a unity amongst also the clergy members and the community members somewhat unity but uh we're a very small community you know it's a thousand people this is not la glendale this is not paris uh so it's we all know each other we're all neighbors we've all um, brought up together we've been raised together so uh we know all the issues and you can lobby easily you, know, you can go try to convince people talk to everyone uh, every day talk to this person that person tell them you need to come there's an obligation this is a duty and so on and uh, i mean it's normal that we didn't have everyone on board that it was low levels of engagement in the beginning but gradually obviously that increased and today i mean you have all the different uh, political organizations all the different uh, community centers that work together you have people who haven't talked to each other in 20 30 years sitting next to each other you know in the art club the new club we have where there are no political parties affiliations or anything and uh, it's heartwarming you know uh, it's 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 the silver lining uh, of this whole issue and this is the only place where we thank about it <laughs> is for uniting the armenian community something that is unprecedented i mean and uh, yeah, so that's that's where we're at now. Wonderful, thank you. Um, I'll direct my next question to Mr. Karkonyan. At what point did your legal team join the movement to save the Armenian quarter, and why did you feel compelled to? And also, if you can add on, what is the role of law in all of this, and what cases or projects has your team undertaken to this effect? Well, thank you so much, uh, Mane, for the, the question. Thank you for convening this uh, this Zoom session here, because this is a really important issue. My own personal involvement on this issue, I, this is something I was I had spoken about previously in, in various talks and before various you know, you know attorney groups uh, regarding the crisis facing the Armenian community uh, when I first visited in 1991. Um, so it is this, the issue has come to a head, uh, but this is not a new issue. The land issue, this particular land issue has been on the table for uh, quite some time. And I think it, and, and before I kind of talk about how the, how the, the, who, you know, our legal team, how we got involved, I think it might be important to kind of step back just for a second um, and, and really kind of understand that you know, the Jerusalem Armenian community is not a diaspora like every other diaspora. It's really important to understand that. This, you know, in the, in the hierarchy of Armenian status, if you will, we have our sovereign republic, right? Uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, we've had historically uh, Nagorno-Karabakh, the Republic of Artsakh, which is people with a status, uh, a legal status. The Armenian quarter of Jerusalem is third on that rung in that, it has an actual status. There's something called the status quo, which establishes the Armenian quarter in a legal sense as, as a constituent quarter of the old city of Jerusalem. And this is really important because this isn't like a diaspora where we talk about in, you know, in New York or LA or you know, Marseille or what have you. This is something that has that is legally recognized as a constituent part of the old city. And the reason why I bring that up is because since 1948, the creation of the state of Israel, the population of the Armenian city, the Armenian quarter, has shrunk considerably. We were at a height of around 16 to 18,000, depending on who you ask, in terms of population. As you just heard from Setrak, now 75 years plus on, the Armenian population is at a thousand. That's over a 90% decrease in population. I mean, that's a significant demographic weight to bear on a city, uh, on a on a on a community that has such a established history um, in uh, in Jerusalem, and so that brings us back to the question of you know how you know why that happens and why we got involved. You know the forces at play in the depopulation of, of the Armenian quarter and really this this real estate squeeze, if you will, on the Armenian quarter are significant. These are these are real global. Uh, forces that are at play. Um, 
anybody who can, and I would, those that are familiar with the Armenian Quarter, that's great, you will know what I'm talking about, but anybody who doesn't can pull up a map on Google and, and quickly identify the fact that the Armenian Quarter sits in a strategic geopolitical position in this really small little area of the old city. Um, and what it, where it sits in between is the entrance from West Jerusalem uh, by car, uh, and it's the way you would drive if you were looking to go into the Jewish quarter, you'd have to pass through the Armenian quarter. Um, the issues that have been, uh, that, that the Armenian quarter has faced over, and the Armenian Patriarchate has faced over the years, um, is largely based on the, uh, due to this large dem attempt to make a democratic, demographic shift in the actual population, uh, in, uh, in the old city. It's no secret that there's been efforts among, uh, right-wing Israeli groups, Jewish settler groups, to Judaize, if you will, the old city. Um, there are forces against that, not only in Palestine, but within Jerusalem, within the Jewish community as well, that want to maintain this mosaic, this, this tapestry, if you will, of what Jerusalem is and should be, which is very inclusive of the fact of not only the Jewish, Muslim, and Christian quarter, but also the Armenian quarter. The Armenian quarter provides some element of stability to the a really tense geopolitical reality that exists today in, in Jerusalem. Um, we got involved uh, because of the two people that you see on that other, uh, on the screen here, Setrag and Hago. When we saw what they were doing uh, in terms of standing up for the rights of the community, and that's really important, for the rights of the community to be able to maintain their Armenian identity and to maintain the Armenian integrity of the Armenian quarter, those are issues that that I personally find uh, redeeming. I find those issues globally to be issues that we all need to be thinking about. And I'm lucky, you know, to be joined by, you know, in that effort by uh, people you you I'm sure have heard of, um, and some of whom are on this call with us today. Um, Garo Vazarian, who is a criminal defense attorney in um, in California, is uh, is a member of our team and was a member of our team from day one. Uh, Armand Tatoyan, the former human rights defender of the Republic of Armenia, uh, he's uh, he's with us as well on this call and has been a member of our team. Um, Ani Nazarian, who uh, I'm sure you all know uh, through her her activities um, at uh, among with the ASA and Armenian Students Association at, at uh, Southwestern and otherwise, and just generally throughout the community. Um, and Liz Aldajani, whose uh, family, she's a, a law partner of, uh, of ours and, and uh, whose uh, family roots go back to Jerusalem and, and has been very helpful in kind of, kind of helping us shape this. Um, so we reached out to them uh, back in, uh, back when the, the movement uh, really kind of got started on the ground. We reached out to them because we knew that, you know, their effort and their goals were right-minded. Their, their goals matched what we felt was important for the global community to, to, to focus on. Um, and we felt the need to be able to bring whatever level of expertise we could bring from the legal side to assist them. Because to answer your other question, obviously when you're dealing with, uh, with contract law, when you're dealing with uh, situations where you have land, uh, land leases um, and transactions, Obviously, law has a big role to play in. Um, and this is not a simply a legal question. Um, it is a political question. It is a social demography question. And it's really a question of the moral will of, of, of the Armenian people. You know, we're going to sit back and just watch as we get disenfranchised again. Um, but then, you know, we might as well wrap it up and go home and say that, you know, it doesn't matter anymore. But when you have people on the ground that actually want to live as Armenians in the old city of Jerusalem, that want to live in a uh, in a uh, in a renaissance, if you will, not a demographic, you know, devastation, but a reality that allows them to grow their families, grow families, create families, and go to Armenian schools, go to Armenian events, and be able to live as Armenians in a historic city where Armenians have status as a community, I think it's incumbent upon all of us to say, yes, you know, whatever help that we can deliver, we're ready to deliver. And it really, it's been a very rewarding experience for all of us because the commitment that Seva and Setag and Hago have demonstrated 
um, not only over the last eight months, but you know, this is a, you know, this is an impact on their internal lives. I mean, they kind of laugh and joke about it because they're young and they're, you know, and they're full of uh, motivation and energy. But you know, very few people would be able to stand up to the pressures that these two young men have endured on the ground. There. And I say that in all honesty. And I'm not talking just about the physical threats; they've been attacked repeatedly. Um, uh, by for, for for protecting that land, they've been and that's physically attacked. Um, but they've been attacked in a lot of different ways as well. Um, you know, whether it's through legal means, political means, pressure. Um, you know, it takes a lot to stand up for something you believe in. This is something we all believe in. This is what everybody on the legal team believes in. That that our presence in Jerusalem needs to be underlined, needs to be protected. And you know, in a in a phrase, you know, enough is enough. Like we cannot be, we cannot be removed from every place where we have an indigenous and status-based presence. You know, at some point we have to draw the line. And that takes actual commitment, not only by the people on the ground, but the rest of us to support that. Um, and, you know, a lot of that is legal, but a lot of it is otherwise. A lot of it is media. A lot of it is, you know, changing narratives. A lot of it is journalism. Um, you know, a lot of it is just political will, but we have to realize that the, our future in Jerusalem literally is in the hands of all of us. It's not just this legal team or it's not just Hagop and Setra, um, you know, to be able to maintain what they've maintained against the forces that are at play. And they are significant forces, government forces, political forces, uh, financial forces that are at play to try to dislodge the Armenian community from the, from Goveru Bardev. Um, you know, it, it's it's an amazing thing to see and it's motivating. And I think that's what's really important for us. You know, it's one thing to lend your assistance to people um, to do whatever work we can. And we do it all on a public interest pro bono basis um, to help them. But it's one other thing to see them doing the heavy lifting on the ground. And that's what we've seen the whole way. And our commitment to them is, is unwavering. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your answer. Um, this next question can be for whoever wants to take it. But what has the Israeli state's response been to the settler violence in the Armenian quarter? And how do you envision the state's response moving forward as your movement evolves? So, uh, as uh, Carney mentioned, um, not only this land is targeted, let's say, since 1967, but many other areas that we know in East uh, Jerusalem. And if we take the Armenian issue, so the Armenian, the Armenian culture is a great target for the settler uh, groups, especially during these days. I mean, since the election of the new Israeli far right wing government, settlers are doing everything they want not only in jerusalem but also in the west bank and other places in the country and uh, unfortunately the israeli government uh current one and previous uh, ones they never did something uh they didn't they never uh had a strong uh, uh stand in front of uh, these uh and that's why today these groups uh, are targeting Christians, are targeting minorities in uh, Jerusalem, are targeting their uh, properties. So uh, in the past, I can say, 30 years, Christians are targeted by these groups, taking over uh, church properties uh, of the Greek Orthodox Patriarchate, of the Armenian Patriarchate uh, now, and the government is directly or indirectly supporting these groups. Why directly and why indirectly? Directly, for example, back in the 80s, when the Greek Orthodox Patriarchate had uh, an illegal land sale, the government supported these uh, settlers to get into that building and take over the building. And now they are still there, sitting in that building with the support of the government. Indirectly, was the issue of the Petra and the Imperial Hotels in Jaffagate, the entrance of the old city, where the same settler group took over these buildings, uh, but with the indirect support of the government. And same happening now in the Armenian Quarter. I mean, we are still investigating this issue, but uh, with the 
with everything, with the information we have, it's very clear uh, that settlers are, are behind this uh, deal. Every step, everything that happened in the past three months, the contract that when you, when you read the content in the, in the deal, you understand that settlers are behind this uh, deal. For example, recently we heard that the government is planning to start uh, and register the land uh, from the from the ramparts of the old city to Jaffa Gate. Uh, and uh, in the past years, when the go uh, when the government decided to register lands in East Jerusalem, they only registered five percent of out of the one hundred percent of the unregistered uh, properties, and they registered the properties where settlers are targeting these properties. So it so imagine to yourself that the government is supporting the these uh, groups. Who attack minorities, who attack uh, uh, Palestinians, who uh, take over illegally uh, lands in the West Bank, in East Jerusalem, and are putting in danger not only the harmony and the, uh, and the peace between the different communities in the old city, but putting in danger the status quo of Jerusalem. And uh, the, the struggle we are having and the fight uh, we are doing is not only for Armenians, but also for Christians, because today Christians as a community, as a whole in Jerusalem is in great existential threat, and not only the Armenians. Out of the one million citizens in Jeruz uh, uh, residents of Jerusalem, only 10,000 people are Christians. So it shows you the danger of the Christian presence, the Armenian uh, presence, by the settler groups, but unfortunately by our own leaders. Thank you for your response. Anything to add, Satrak or Mr. Kerkonian? Oh, uh, you're muted. Yeah, was... I'm muted. Yeah, um, you know, I, I guess I would like to say that you know, um, hate is often very sophisticated. We like to think that hate is like a real kind of basic emotion, but it's actually quite sophisticated when it's done institutionally, um, and it's persistent. Um, you know. And, and the reason I bring that up is that, you know, too often Armenians are very reactionary. Something happens and we all of a sudden uh, give our attention to it. And, and we genuinely care. We really do care. And I'm not talking about the many people that have joined this call, but generally speaking, we really care. The truth of the matter is, though, however, that the ones that try to displace and disenfranchise and, and, uh, and hate from the Armenian people are much more committed in that task. When I say committed, they're committed over time. You know, when when Hagob and Setag are talking about government, uh, government institutions and government players and settler organizations, these are sophisticated parties that are funded, significantly funded by foreign sources, by government sources. And there's a, a concerted, orchestrated effort to remove the Armenian presence and indeed remove the Christian presence from the old city of Jerusalem. The target today is Armenians. Uh, it hasn't always been only Armenians. Uh, as they alluded to a second ago, uh, the Greek uh, Orthodox Church faced similar attacks previously. The Latin Church faced similar attacks recently. Uh, what's unique about this particular place is that it, this is kind of like the straw that will break the camel's back. The loss of, of this part of the Armenian quarter um, and in the way that this, that this deal is, is on the table will forever change what the old city of Jerusalem looks like. It will change the demographic, perhaps even irredeemably. In other words, it will not be able to go back to the way it was. And that's really, really, really important. And that's also why you have regional governments at, uh, that are involved at the, and, con and concerned about this issue. Um, the King of Jordan is extremely concerned about this issue. The Palestinian Authority is extremely concerned about this issue. Um, the United States government and a number of regional governments in, in the Middle East are concerned about this issue. This is this is a very unique time in our history. We don't get to pick the times that we live in. And I say this largely to the students that are on this call. We don't get to pick the time period that we're, but we have to contribute to it, understanding that we're living in this continuum of time. And in that particular time, we have to be very cognizant and very awake regarding the challenges facing our people. 
And we have to realize that we are a one, we are one people. These are challenges that we all face together. Um, and, and I think it's really important to think about it that way. Because if we don't think about it that way, and it's about a community against, you know, all of these forces alone, we don't have we don't have a shot. What we have to do is realize that our forces have to be brought together throughout the diaspora. And that's why I commend you bringing this group together, Manet, for this call, because, you know, it's important for young Armenians to realize that there are young Armenians that are literally suffering, that are literally being pushed out of their homes, that are literally being driven away from future that they want on, uh, you know, in their homeland. I mean, this is the homeland for them. Um, and I think that we need to start realizing that, you know, uh, that, you know, we we are the ones that have to stand in the way of that. And sometimes we have to make some really difficult choices. Um, and especially when we have people on the ground that are making those difficult choices, we need to be as, support, as supportive of them uh, as uh, as possible. I know some people might not know. I mean, these young men and the people uh, on their team uh, on the ground have been staked out, literally staked out like in possession of property to make sure that they are on the property for over a hundred days now, a hundred nights, you know? Um, and I think that that's an important thing to realize that we need to not only support, uh, but we need to understand what kind of sacrifice that takes, just like we have to understand and really appreciate the type of sacrifice that the people of Artsakh have gone through and are going through right now, even after the ethnic cleansing and displacement and genocide, that we have to realize that this is a collective struggle. What's really amazing is that some of the guys that are holding ground right now in um, in uh, in Jerusalem were very active proponents uh, speaking out and assisting us during the blockade. I mean, this is we are one nation, and it's really important that we start appreciating that and really start working with that in mind. Where one of us suffers, where one of our families suffer, all of us have to suffer. And if we don't, you know, we're going to be, uh, you know, we're going to see darker and darker times ahead. If we can realize that the suffering that that the communities on the ground face in places of risk like this are our problem too, I think we have a we have an opportunity, an important opportunity to turn that corner. Thank you. Um, the next question will similarly be directed to anyone who would like to take it on. Uh, why is the movement to save the Armenian quarter in Jerusalem so consequential? In other words, why does it matter? And why should our, the Armenian and non-Armenian communities care? I think uh, we've already gone through some of the answers, especially with uh, Karnik's uh, recent answer. But look, we're in a very difficult stage as Armenians. We all know it. It's been hectic it's been frustrating it's been tiring it's been for the past three years i'm sure we've all gone through the same things of seeing our people getting displaced from a continuous inhabitation of at least three thousand four thousand years and this is the exact same issue we're facing we are facing these issues all over the world we have lost lebanon we have lost syria as major hubs of western armenian the armenian diaspora the armenian nation and Jerusalem, uh, and we shall not allow for Jerusalem to be another one of those places, to be another Syria, to be another Lebanon, to be another Artsakh. This will be, as Karnit said, the straw that breaks the camel's back. We need to deliver a victory to Armenians, because to get out of this state, of this, for some lethargic state where they, they feel useless, they, they don't know what to do, they don't know how to help the nation, how to help Armenians, this is it. This issue has no, thankfully, no Armenian internal politics in it. So everyone can join in. Everyone can support. It's Armenians against others. It's Armenians against bigger threats, big powers, as Karnig explained, against state apparatus, against settler organizations, against private companies, against thugs, whatever you want. But it's we are facing it as Armenians. We are targeted because we are Armenians, because we are Christians. And this is where the Armenian nation should unite. This is where we can prove that Armenian unity can have victories, that Armenian that the Armenian unity, the, the real unity, not the unity we talk about, like slogans and so on, Kubaya, let's dance together. No, we need to be dedicated to this cause. We need to be determined. We need to go 
till the end, until victory, we need to deliver this victory to the Armenian nation to give hope to our brethren, to give hope to our nation, to give hope to our community, and to show the community, the Armenian community, the Armenian nation, that Armenians can be victorious even during these very tough and trying times for us. And, and this is why it's very important for Armenians. When it comes to non-Armenians, it's keeping the integrity, uh, the, the character, the unique character, the diversity, the multi-ethnic, multi-faith dimension to Jerusalem. This is where we get joined by Israeli civil society members, by Palestinian civil society members, by people from all uh, walks of life. I mean, we've had South African uh, priests come visit us. We've had the Bishop of Norway. We've had anyone you can imagine from any country in the world has been to the Cow's Garden and have seen what is going on here because everyone knows that Jerusalem is a city that belongs to all the three Abrahamic religions, that belongs to Muslims, Jews, Christians, and to all the other religions. Jerusalem is the center of the... Jerusalem uh, needs to be protected. Its its character needs to be protected. This is where the international community comes in. This is also not talking about international law and all those issues and the status quo and 67 and 48 just as a city that is so rich in, in cultural history and heritage for every nation. We have... Ethiopians here, we have Assyrians, we have Greeks, we have Latins, we have we have uh, Ashkenazi Jews, Mizrahi Jews, we have Muslim Shias, Muslim Sunnis. Everyone is under the same in Jerusalem, and this should be protected at all costs. So on the Armenian issue, it should be protected. It should be the victory the Armenians have been longing for, for so long. And for the international community, it should be the preservation the unique character and the diversity of Jerusalem and the, the, the tapestry, the rich tapestry of Jerusalem that should be preserved uh, at all costs. Thank you. And I guess this touches on part of your response, but how has your movement fostered meaningful coalitions with non-Armenian groups and organizations in Jerusalem or outside of it? Is this something you're working toward or do you feel as though you've been mostly alone in this fight? No, we we definitely have. I mean, we're first of all we're we're in touch with all the diplomatic missions. All the governments are uh, worried about this issue. Uh, as I said, Israeli civil society. I mean, we have groups that come every Friday. Hagop has done that tour. I think about fifty times. We've had above five hundred people come visit from the Israeli civil society. We have Palestinian civil society people coming. Um, literally. Everyone who comes to Jerusalem today, I think it's become one of the attractions is the cow's garden, you know. They come here, they're very interested, they want to help in every way they can. Uh, and they see this small community that has united and that's standing firmly uh, on their ground against these big powers. And I think it's inspiring, especially for oppressed people, for people who have gone through, through, through this kind of suffering. And uh, it gives hope to a lot of people beyond the Armenian world. Uh, it gives hope to all our Christian brothers and sisters here. When, you know, the Greek patriarchate issues happen, the others happen. Okay, with the St. John in the 80s, there was a bit of commotion. Nothing this long-lasting and nothing this, I mean, uh, spread in the media that everyone is talking about. So a lot of our Christian brothers and sisters are actually shocked at, wow, you know, we always say this, the Armenians are the most peaceful community. No, no one expected this. I think not even Armenians themselves. So, like, uh, when when you think about it, the Armenian quarter, it's the cleanest, it's the safest, it's the most secure. Everyone can pass by here. This is where Jews pass by to go to the Kotel. Muslims pass by here. The Christians pass by here. And they have zero problems. problems at all. And that, that was kind of our, I, I mean, it was one of our strengths was being underestimated. You know, in Sun Tzu, the, the art of war, it's to show weakness when you're strong. And we inadvertently did that. And so people thought we were weak because we we're peaceful and we would be scared. But once the attacks started, once armed settlers started coming, armed thugs, masked thugs, the police, the municipal, I mean, we stood against anyone who tried to come uh, in our way in protecting our rights and protecting our land and protecting our community. And we succeeded. And that's something that gives hope to all of the minorities in Jerusalem and to all the world community that faces similar challenges. 
uh, if I may just add a couple of uh, points to that. Um, I think that, you know, one of the things that these uh, these guys have kind of shown us is this need for this shift in our national consciousness. Um, you know, we we need to start thinking in those in those broader terms. And when we think in those broader terms and act in those broader terms, we will have allies. I spoke in Washington, D.C. just two weeks ago on uh, the Jerusalem issue. There are organizations that that uh, that claim to espouse the rights of Christians globally who did not know what was happening to this particular Armenian community. So the voice matters. And that's something that everybody, you don't need to be you know, a lawyer. You don't need to be on the ground. You don't bringing bringing voice to the calls of your people is one of the jobs of every Armenian, I believe, you know, and, 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 and we have to, when I say a shift in our mentality, I think we have to stop thinking of ourselves as entitled. If we don't struggle for what we want, we will, it will be taken from us. It will be taken from us. There is, you have to, we have to come to terms with this. You can live as comfortably as you want here in Chicago, in Los Angeles, in Paris, but as long as there is an Armenian family or Armenian communities that are suffering, we have to we have to come to come to the ground. We have to be grounded in our empathy to realize that's not happening to somebody else. That's happening to us. We're lucky, I have to say, on this movement that there are a lot of very strong, committed Armenian. Uh, Armenians that are from Jerusalem, we talk about allies that are now living elsewhere throughout the world. And those Armenians, I, and I'm just thinking out loud, Jack Yurejan is one of them who lives in Los Angeles, where you are, is a, a patron of many, many causes, um, has been, you know, a tremendous patron of this cause, understanding what these boys are doing on the ground. He himself was is from Jerusalem and knows the the pressures that these young young men are under. And, you know, it's it's important for us to change that um, our own national consciousness and to understand and teach one another that it matters. Just like during the 286 days of blockade in Artsakh, I don't think that there was a conscious Armenian who felt comfortable eating, knowing that Armenian children didn't have food. In the same way, we should not be comfortable today knowing that there are Armenian families who might be out on the street who might be evicted, where Armenian churches are under, under attack, where Armenian land could be taken. This is a very serious reality that we live in, you know, and we are not like, uh, you know, uh, like the Italians, and we are not like the, you know, other diaspora communities, and I'm speaking particularly to our friends in America. We're not like them. We're under direct attack right now. It couldn't be worse. I, I assure you, it could not be worse than what it is right, right now. And Jerusalem is one of those touch points, which because of where it is, because of what it is, it could have international um, uh, exposure for the struggle of the Armenian Christians of the Middle East. You know, some argue that because of where the South Caucasus is and Nagorno-Karabakh and you know, Iran, Azerbaijan, Armenia, it's in the wrong neighborhood for people to really care about. Well, that excuse doesn't happen with respect to Jerusalem. It's exactly the neighborhood that everybody cares about. So our voice needs to be heard in this discourse. You know, too often, you know, the Armenians have been caught between what everybody thinks is a bipolar conflict between the Israelis and the Palestinians. When they're sitting down talking about how, you know, and at some point the war in Gaza will end and there will be a table to sit down to. And at that time, I can assure you that the Armenian quarter is going to be discussed. It was discussed in other pre uh, previous peace talks uh, between is uh, 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 Israelis and Palestinians, and it will be discussed again. And our voice has to be on the table. Otherwise, other people will make the decisions for our own. And it's about time that we understand that we need to have our own agency. We talk about it in, their, in the individual sense, in America especially, how everyone has their agency and their voice and their authenticity. Well, we have historic authenticity. We have a historic presence. We need to start thinking along those lines and not just letting history happen to us.
You know, the Artaxis have made an empowered stand, a stand that many of us could never have even imagined making for a purpose to say that you need to stand up for what you believe. And the struggle that they went through is massive. It's significant. There are narratives that are going to try to change that story. But I'll tell you one thing, 286 days is 286 days. Try to go 286 minutes without eating, and then we'll talk about what kind of struggle they went through. These, this Jerusalem struggle has an opportunity to be on the main stage. It has an opportunity to show people that the Armenians need to stay, want to stay, and deserve to stay in their homes, in their quarter, and to live not as uh, Israelis or Palestinians or Arabs or this or that, but to live as Armenians. There's nothing wrong with that. There's everything right with that. And we have to get used to saying that. And we have to believe it ourselves. Thank you. Um, and I've been getting a lot of requests from audience members to unmute and ask questions. So we will get to that briefly. We have just one or two questions left before we open the floor to Q&A. Um, are there any important facts that are often overlooked or misconstrued about your movement to save the Armenian quarter? Um, and if so, can you please shine a light on them? Can, can you repeat the question? Sorry. Are there any important facts that you think are often, often overlooked or misconstrued about the fight to save the Armenian quarter? And if so, could you please shine a light on them? Um, so basically people need the, the historical background of the Armenian quarter is very important and the Armenian presence in Jerusalem. I mean, we our presence here dates back to the 4th century and having a presence here since the 4th century is a big thing and having equal rights in the holy sites, the holy sepulchral church and the holy nativity church and having our own quarter, uh, having the rights in the holy places, for example, the 10 million nation, Armenian nation, having equal rights with the 1 billion uh, Catholic uh, faith is a big uh, issue and a big thing to be proud of. As a small nation having equal rights with this big Catholic uh, church. And the Save the Ark movement is not only that to just protect the cow's garden or parts of the Armenian quarter, but to protect the long history and the long presence in uh, Jerusalem. And having the quarter, having the rights, having this long and uninterrupted presence in Jerusalem is something that all of us as Armenians should be proud of. And many times in interviews that uh, both of us give, we mention that Jerusalem, uh, we consider Jerusalem as our spiritual homeland. We have our own homeland, Armenia, but we also have uh, Jerusalem as our spiritual homeland. And you cannot be here a Christian without having, uh, without protecting your rights. You cannot be here without having your own church or your own quarter or your own neighborhood or your own rights in the Holy Sepulchre Church. In order to be respected and in order to achieve something in this place, you need to have these things. And we Armenians, we have these things. And now, unfortunately, these things are, are under great danger. The Armenian quarter, our rights in different places, the integrity of the Armenian uh, quarter. So the Save the Ark movement starts with the Cow's Garden, but we continue by protecting the Cow's Garden, protecting the integrity of the Armenian quarter, protecting the rights of the uh, of Armenian uh, Armenians and the Armenian church in the uh, holy sites. Setrag always mentions that uh, in the Holy Sepulchre Church, when our clergy and the brotherhood uh, they enter the church and they have uh, the, the Holy Mass and uh, uh, protecting the rights, they should have one to 200 people with them, community members. But unfortunately, we are not having it. And you cannot protect your own rights without having a community with you. And, com and protecting uh, the Armenian presence, there are two issues. Protecting the institution, which is the Armenian Patriarchate of Jerusalem, and the Armenian community of Jerusalem, which both they have uh, uh, rights in this place. And this is what we are working on, to ensure that our rights as a community 
and as a church will be respected and will be violated. And this is where the Armenian nation should push and this is where the Armenian nation should help us to make sure that future generations in Jerusalem will be able to continue and live here and will be able to go to the only Armenian school in the Holy Land. Not only for the future generations of the Armenian community in Jerusalem, but also future generations of Armenian communities around the world who should be able to visit Jerusalem and who should be able and come and see with their own eyes the importance of the Armenian quarter and the importance of our rights in the Holy Sepulchre Church. It's not enough to be proud of the Armenian quarter from LA or from uh, Australia or from uh, Europe or from any other part. It is important to come here with your own eyes and see this place because when pilgrims come here to Jerusalem and when they pass through the passport control and the airport they see that the, the Armenians are coming and the government will start to take it into consideration that sorry uh, I'm muting can you hear us Yes. Okay, sorry. So the government will take it into consideration that there are Armenians around the world that are interested in Jerusalem. And this is where Save the Ark starts and continue our work by protecting the rights of all Armenians around the world. Because at the end, these properties and whatever we have here in Jerusalem and in the Holy Land are all national properties. And the nation should protect these places. Just to add to that small information fact is that during the 1920s, we used to have 10,000 uh, pilgrims, Armenian pilgrims, visiting Jerusalem. So one of our calls uh, to the Armenian nation, to the Armenian people, would be to come and visit uh, Jerusalem, be it in, on a pilgrimage or just a touristic visit. If you see what we have here, trust me, everyone will want to fight for it. You have four quarters in the old city of Jerusalem, the Christian quarter, the Muslim quarter, Jewish quarter, and the Armenian quarter. Just by realizing this fact, you can understand the importance of the Armenian presence here. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, I do want to be mindful of your time because I know how late it's getting. So at this point, we'll open up the... Um, We'll open it up to questions from the audience. We have gotten quite a few from the chat. So let's say we'll wrap this up in around 15 minutes. If possible, try to answer the questions as succinctly as possible, just so we have time to get through as many as possible. But um, And if at any point you're getting too tired, just let us know. But we will try to wrap up in 15 minutes. So um, at this point, if anyone wants to turn on their video and raise their hand, go ahead. And if not, I can begin reading some of the questions that um, we received from the chat. I'll just give you guys three seconds if anyone wants to. Okay, so if not, uh, let me go ahead and read um, the, one of the first questions. Ah, there we go. We have a question. Yes, go ahead. Just, I'm sorry, I cannot um, speak English because my English is not so good. Uh, so I will talk in Armenian. Yes, Karam Hostel Highlands, Kaskana. I have a short ten. As some Vertahana, the Herosan is Capes, shot MPCH Hatan Kenanum, Irans Anznakan and the Tangutsun, the Nile of Aspasasats, the Tangitak, is Capes Yerta Partem, yes, Israelit Sam, Abraham Pelavivum. Im Nakatarum Nero Vespisi Vankasem, Raman Im Taranso Vorima Hirakan de Protsum, Carnival Manchester and Caprum, the Lavivin Chikahakan de Prot. The Protsakan Zagrum, Kartakan Zagrum, Yang Sograsnumen, Vor Christon Neutsun, the Aranda, Christoniana de Aranda Boren, U Haka Christoniakan and Tat Perekat with Sunantalis. Han Rutsana, Yerehanarin. I think Han Menk Pitiaveli Horena and Keshantrin. Yepor Shat Tesek Ankam Orenki Tesank Unitia Tevertsnek, Irank 
մարդկանց ներշնչում են ատելություն կրոնական հողի վրա, կրոնական հիմքերով։ Այսինքն մենք ունենք լծակներ, որ կարող ենք դրա վրա հենվելով, իրենց դեմ տանք, որ դուք տարածում եք ատելություն է ժողովրդի մեջ Քրիստոնյաների դեմ և ահա մենք ունենք վար օրինակ, որ հայրին այսօրվա դրությամբ մեր ճնշման արդյունքում ապորինի ձևով փորձում են հաստացի վտարել այն վայրից, որտեղ որ երկար տարիներ հարուրամյակներ շարունակ մենք ունեք ներկացուն։ Դասա գրքերից ես կարող եմ հատվասներ հանել, որ իմ տղան անձամբ նշելա, նաև կարտես կա, որը որ ուրեմ են միջնադարի կարտես դա, որտեղ որ նշացա, կարտեսի վրա կիլիկյա, արմենյա, գրացա, իրանք դպրոցում սովրասնում է, որ դա թուրկյայա։ Ես իմ տղայդ դասատույ հետ ընդհարում ունեցա, ես խոսեցի, ասեցի, դուք իրավունք չունեք և իրան ապացուցեցի, որ իրանք շատ մեծ սխալ են գործում և իրավունք չունեն, ասեց այո, բայց ես եսպես են կարծում, եթե դա որենքի դաշտ տեղափոխել, կստացվի ենպես, որ ուրեմ անորինական տեղեկատվություն են տարածում ուսությանում աշակերտներին և նաև կրոնական հողի վրա ատելություն են սերմասնում մարդկանց մեջ։ Ինչը որ շատ մեծ հետևանքներով է հղի այսպես ասաց, որտև դա մենակ հայրին չի վերաբերվում։ Նաև այսօրվա դրությամբ իզրայլը բարդ իրավիճակում է գտնվում, ինքը պատերազմավարում պաղեստինի հետ և սարսապելի իրականություն է իրականում։ Հիմա տեսեք, ովքեր են ոգնում իզրայելին, ոգնում են Քրիստոնյա երկրներ։ Եթե մենք շեշտադրումը ճիշտ անենք, որ Քրիստոնյաներին մի կողմից հալացում են, պաստոր են հալացում են Իզրայելում, այսօրվա դրության, բայց Քրիստոնյական երկրները հովանավորում են Իզրայելին։ Այսինքն մենք պիտի դարձնենք սա համա Քրիստոնյական խնդիր, սա մենակ համահայկական խնդիր չի։ Եվ որ մենք կարողանանք դարձնենք համա Քրիստոնյական խնդիր, գուծ է մեր իրավիճակը ավելի թեթևանը։ Հակարակ դեպքում մենք հայերս բարդ իրավիճակում են գտնվում և արցախյան այդ պատերազմը, դա ամեն չէ վնցոր գալի սեր բերում Հակով ջան, ուրեմ ունս ենց կարջ ասեմ, հա կարջ ասեմ, այս ամեն չէ կարջ ասնեմ։ Մենք ունենք հնարավորություն իրանց կրթական ծրագրում կտնել հենարաններ, որպիսի ապացուցենք դատարանով, հանրային ձև, որ իրանք հատուկ � Եվ այսինքն ժիշտ է ծեր ասածը և մենք ալ անցած ենք այդ ուսեղ որագան գանցնենք այս Քրիստոնյաների հանտեպ վարվելագերբը, բայց մենք միշտական պործում ենք, որ գրոնագան հարցի չի տարձնել։ Բայց կ հարց տարնա և այդ Քրիստոնյա մեզությունները և գազմագերբությունները, որ հագեն և գսադարեն իզրայելի գարավարության, բետք է որ դեղյա գլան այս սադրանքներ են և վդանքներ են, որ կան Քրիստոնյա համայինքների հանտեպ։ Շնույակալ Um, if there is anyone else who would like to raise their hand and ask a question this time, go ahead. Anna Jan, you may unmute here. But it is. Uh, shoot, shoot awesome. So I live in Los Angeles 32 years. I was a refugee from Baku. I've been in Cal Garden. I highly recommend guys you to go to one day because you're like in different world. It's not, it's completely different, Jan. So my question to you, I personally, I'm an activist here in LA with Artsakh, Ayastan, I'm in Incho, uh, Zinvorne, I'm in Incho. My question, what I personally can help you with, how can I contribute 
Inchanim, Michkaram Yesanim. So if I know what I can help, I'm going to tell to everybody in my, um, among my activists. Where, where those who were, uh, we stopped freeway 134, um, our, um, we went to cancel it, Turkey, everywhere. So I'm one of those. Inch karam yes, yes, ordinary person, Sovarak and Martin, what can I do? Asik Jan. Anything. So first, thank you. Thank you very much for your dedication for the Armenian cause, whether it's Artsakh, Armenia, and now Jerusalem. Uh, we appreciate it a lot. And first thing that we ask from people is to raise this issue. Bring this issue, talk about this issue with your friends, with family, with people you think that can uh, 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 change the public uh, opinion. And uh, uh, first thing, you live in the States and uh, uh, the best way for a, a U.S. citizen is to pressure yes. uh, his own government. So okay. the Congress, the Senate, the White House, everything possible to pressure your own government because at the end, political pressure is very important here. I mean, there is the legal front which we are fighting now, but we are also fighting on the political uh, front. And we are asking from all people, all Armenians who are ready to support that, to support us. It's not enough to follow us. It's not enough uh, to donate, but it is important also to pressure your own governments to pressure the Israeli Israeli. Uh, government to put an end to uh, this illegal takeover and uh, the existential threat of Armenians and Christians in uh, Jerusalem. Especially with the elections coming up and the Armenian electorate is a huge uh, deal, specifically, especially in California, you need to put these issues on the table. You need to tell them we are going to vote according to your stance on <laughs> Armenian Jerusalem, for example. Just get one issue, because on all the other issues, you're going to get lost in the internal Armenian politics and other uh, internal political matters. This is a matter where you can put it on the table and say, we are voting according to this. If you do not do anything vis-a-vis uh, -vis the Armenian Jerusalem issue, we are not going to vote for you. You need to get all the congressmen, you need to get even Adam Schiff and all the others, uh, conservatives, liberals, doesn't matter. Every congressman should be written to, you need to exert pressure on them. If you have any connections with them, always bring up this issue. It will have its reverberations and it will send shockwaves all over the American political uh, system. If I can add just uh, 10 seconds to that real quickly, I think one of the other things we need to do as Armenians um, is to make sure that we're teaching our children that the Armenian quarter exists and it belongs to us. This is a very important basic thing we, we overlook. We need to teach our children that Artsakh is ours and it belongs to us, regardless of the political narratives that people throw this way and that way. We know what's true. We know that those churches in Artsakh weren't built by Azeris or Albanians. We know this. So let us not gaslight ourselves, okay? We know the truth. We know that the Armenian quarter of Jerusalem is an Armenian place. We need to teach our children that, because I can assure you, if we don't teach our children that, others will be teaching them something very, very different, I assure you. So that's one bit of advice. Thank you all, and thank you for the question. Um, let's whiz through a couple of more questions in the next three minutes to the best of our extent, and then we'll wrap up because I know it's already past 1 a.m. there. Um, so we had a question from the audience from Arman Antonian, who asks, how has your movement been impacted by the broader conflict around Palestine? So it has had both positive and negative uh, effects. The positive is that uh, all the journalists were here, all eyes are on Jerusalem, on Gaza, but in this region, on Jerusalem, on Israel, on Palestine. So a lot of journalists that were here to cover the Gaza story and the broader conflict uh, made their way to the Armenian Cow's Garden and were able to shed a light on this. Uh, so they thought that this would get lost in the media, another underestim <laughs> underestimation from their part. And it actually got a lot of coverage uh, comparing to, I mean, other issues, uh, local issues that uh, that don't get the attention. And negatively, I mean, it's uh, it's a very tough environment. You know, tensions are very high. Uh, 
hate, discrimination is at an all-time high during conflicts, you know. Uh, the Israeli government has started arming the settler groups and other citizens of Israel, whereas we're not armed, we're not protected. So it has a had a lot of effect in that sense also, where we've kind of lost uh, even more of the sense of security that we even didn't have that much of it, you know. So it has had a lot of effects on us, but we, we, we're we still <laughs> on the ground, we're still determined and, and, and we'll face anything that, that comes against us. Thank you. Um, another question from Shant Avakyan. Uh, with the land deal being brokered by the Patriarch and with the Armenian community members currently not being heavily involved with governance or management of the Armenian quarter, will this event act as an opportunity for the greater Jerusalem Armenian community, as in those not directly involved in the church, to be involved in decision making for the community? You know, if I... If if I may, um, and if it's okay, I know that um, I noticed that in our the number of participants here, we have a couple of members from our legal team that are that are also with us. And I think that there's the uh, um, I'd like, if possible, um, if uh, Garo Hazarian and Arman Tatoyan can address uh, this issue, uh, in particular, perhaps Garo Hazarian can go first with respect to this last question, because I think it's important to kind of understand from the community standpoint. Um, some of the challenges that are being faced. So, Garo, if I can ask you to to uh, unmute yourself, I see you there. Here, let me give him permission to just one quick second. But yeah, of course, we would love to hear from... for the wedding. Uh, hold on. This is... Uh, what what name has he joined under? Under oh, iPhone yeah. ZBG, there it is. Yeah. Nice. Here we are. Thank you so much, um, Mr. Hazarian. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Ah, thank you. Okay. Um, well, uh, I want to thank the All ASA first and foremost for hosting this uh, very critical gathering uh, via Zoom. Uh, I, I'd like to thank my brother and colleague Ar Arman Tatoyan, who is awake at 3.15 in the morning in Yerevan. Uh, and he's no stranger to being awake around the clock when it comes to Armenian issues. Uh, I've always believed that the key uh, uh, to the future of every nation is its youth. And, and I'm particularly encouraged that the OLASA took an interest uh, and um, decided to have this public forum uh, because the youth is who plays a vital role in the well-being of any nation, and in our case, the Armenian nation. Uh, and it's more so today than any other time in modern history. Uh, and when I talk about modern history, uh, let me be clear, I'm talking about Hayot Spot Mutyun. There's a lot being said these days about is it Hayot Spot Mutyun, is it Hayastani Bat Mutyun. But the Armenian nation uh, is not only made up of Western historic Armenia, is not only made up of Artsakh, is not only made up of uh, the Republic of Armenia and all of its diasporan communities, whether it is uh, Beirut, Aleppo, Paris, anywhere else. But Critically important, one such community that has a legal standing, and that is the Armenian Quarter of Jerusalem. Uh, so when we talk about what are other governments doing, what are other people doing, are they're paying lip service the same way they paid lip service to Artsakh and um, in the end did nothing, uh, uh, I think it is it is incumbent upon us whether it's uh, the cities of Goris, Gapan, or Megri, Megri in the Sunic region of Armenia today uh, that are in danger, or the Armenian quarter of Jerusalem, uh, I believe that anyone who values himself or himself or herself as, uh, as a proud Armenian should be visiting these regions. These regions in the past, you know, that were accessible to us, uh, was Shushi and Stepanagert. Uh, Sunik is still accessible to us. Uh, the Armenian quarter of Jerusalem, uh, I, can, I can tell you from personal experience, having gone there uh, with uh, Tarnik, Liz, Arman, Ani, 
uh, uh, six, seven months ago, eight months ago, um, I I keep thinking to myself, how could, how could uh, a thousand Armenians not be supported by 10 million Armenians in, you know, just struggle it does not make, uh, does not make the case. Uh, the young men, Hagop and Setrag, uh, and many like them, their compatriots who are uh, watching the safety of Goveru Bardes, the cow's garden, 24 hours a day, is something that we each can learn lessons from. Uh, we're great at posting Armenian uh, glories of yesterday. We're great at singing Armenian songs. We're great at dancing Armenian dances. But the dance that must be danced is the dance of struggle and resistance. Uh, you know, the Armenian, the Armenian people are resilient people, uh, and and Armenian genocide is proof positive that we can overcome the most difficult of challenges, and the Armenian people of Armenia uh, have shown that they do care about Armenian matters beyond Republic of Armenia borders. Uh, you know, and when we talk, when we talk about, uh, okay, what can I do? Well, 10 years ago, I gave a speech in San Francisco and I used the phrase, the sword and the shield. It was a high tide event. I never forget it. And I envisioned us as being at once the sword and the shield. There are times you're going to be aggressive and there are times you're going to be protective. When it comes to the Armenian quarter, it is unfortunately a time to be at once aggressive so as to be protective. So the likes of Arman Tatoyan, Kardik Kirkonian, Elizabeth Aldajani, Ani Nazarian, Hagop Jernazian, Setrak Balian, and many, many, many others are doing exactly that. But to be Perfectly clear, I'd like to call upon every member of all ASA to rise up and support this colossal effort that is underway, that is ongoing, that is daily and nightly. Because you matter, you know, you count. It's and and and, and don't let anybody tell you you cannot make a difference. Don't wait to be asked to give some help or provide your assistance. Go ahead and offer your help. Reach out to every one of us and see how you can take part. And finally, take ownership. Take ownership. You don't need an invitation to go into your own home. And you don't need an invitation to go to the Armenian quarter and uh, get to know the Armenian community of Jerusalem. Uh, you don't need an invitation to be on the front lines because if you're not on the front lines, you're going to be nowhere. And, you know, everybody says, well, that's too far away. That has nothing to do with me. Yesterday, it was Artsakh. Today, uh, Jerusalem, Armenian quarter uh, is in danger. Tomorrow, it could be your own local community where you live. So I hope to see each of you in the trenches, on the front lines. I know that you can make a difference. And I'm looking forward to you making that difference. The youth. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hazarian. Um, would Mr. Tataran like to unmute and speak as well? Uh, well, yes. Uh, hello to everyone. I hope you can hear me. Yes. Thank you. For being here. I'm very happy to see all of you here. Uh, thank you for excellent uh, presentations and speeches. Um, Garnik, uh, Setra, Hakob, uh, and our superior Karo Hazarian uh, gave excellent speeches, and um, I, I absolutely agree with them. The only thing is that probably I would add that uh, the Armenian, the issue related to the Armenian quarter uh, of Jerusalem is uh, truly a part of uh, integral part of <clears throat> armenian identity 
that is why it is so important it, uh, for us. And I have to say that in Armenia here, people, they do care about this. And they do recognize the importance of this fight, of this struggle. Uh, unfortunately, we have experienced, very bad experience, tragic experience of uh, losing Arza, or uh, of experience of um, mass uh displacement forced displacements from Artsakh and it was the result of uh, of failures uh in in fighting for our rights for our cause that is why we have to do everything here uh to save the and, and the true name I, I think it speaks for itself to save the Armenian quarter which is very important it is an existential issue and it is very very important and i have to say that despite the fact that there is no active support at least public coming from the armenian government which is very bad but the public here people here uh, they do support this idea they do care and uh, they do support uh, our young friends Setrak and hakob uh, in jerusalem and the armenian community there uh, so having said all of this, and, and I, again, let me uh, express my appreciation and say thank you very much for this uh, interesting questions and these discussions. Um, it is very important, and I agree with Cedric and Jacob that uh, we, we have to be vocal and raise awareness. Um, this is very important to, to bring to people's attention what is happening. And of course, uh, after that, order to, to take certain measures depending on the country, depending on the system. Uh, this is maybe, uh, this is it. Uh, I wanted all I wanted to say. Uh, thank you very much again. Thank you. I know how late it is in Yerevan. So thank you so much for your time and presence. It's an honor to have you here. Um, if I may, sorry, but I think we didn't under, uh, answer Shant's uh, question. He's still here. So uh, when it comes to the community, not having a voice and so on, obviously right now our first most important priority is the cow's garden, but we will also do everything possible to ensure that these acts will not be repeated in the future. And this will come, I mean, uh, at a later stage, but there will need to be some changes in order to protect the, the institution to protect the community to protect our properties here sorry i just didn't want to leave that question hanging no worries thank you well i do want to be mindful for everyone's time so i know that there were a couple of questions that are unanswered but we are going to send over all of the questions to the save the armenian quarter team and they will do their best to answer all of them um via social media in the coming weeks so on Instagram and on most major social media platforms, you can find them. Um, and before we adjourn for today, um, we did want to request that whoever is able to turn on their video, please turn on your video and we can do a quick gallery screenshot just so we have record of the event and um, of all of our wonderful participants. And I'll allow Sonia to take it from there. So if you can all please just turn on your videos very quickly, um, that would be wonderful. We'll give everyone a couple of seconds too. Okay, Sonia, you want to take it? <laughs> Don't be shy, guys. All right, everyone, say cheese. Say go. <laughs> Done. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, wonderful. Thank you for having us. Thank, Thank you all immensely for being oh, here. Genuinely. Um, we will be releasing the recording after the event, so if there's anything you'd like to go back and reference. Thank you all. Have a wonderful night. Um, Thank Mr. you. Thank you. Stay strong. Much appreciated. Bye, Anna. Thank you all. Stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.